Hello everyone, my name is Bobby Collins III and thank you for clicking onto this video. This is my oral presentation of coaching methods with the help of the input process output theory. Um, as you can see from the title of this video, it focuses solely on coaching methods that are used in sports society from the viewpoints of the athletes, coaches, and the media as well. Um, the first slide that we'll talk about comes from the key things that need to be known before we get deep into this theory and the research that I did. Um, first is the definition of coaching. Um, the definition that I happen to think of that is, describes this best is someone that pushes the individuals in the sporting realm or life realm in order to help them better fulfill their potential. Um, the type of coaches that we are talking about are coaches that dedicate their lives and put a lot of passion into the sporting realm, which would be um, football, soccer, baseball, basketball, and the many other sports that people think of. Uh, the type of coaches, and not life coaches, although both have some similarities in the way that they are done, both in trying to bring the best out of individuals and influence the communication standpoints, but we'll focus on sports for now. Um, with that being brought up, I'd like you guys to know that the majority of the coaches are asked to do a lot when the players come to them. Um, the first idea is that coaches are asked to be leaders of the team through building plays, putting individuals in the best position to be successful, and having them grasp an understanding that being a team player is crucial. Um, as, the comp as the concept of putting forth 100% effort in everyday life and practices in games in every moment will be crucial to the understanding, especially when we get into my reason and my artifact that I'm gonna be using. Um, then there has to be parents in some cases to the athletes, usually either being a high school or college athlete. Um, then they're asked to be a friend and a counselor. Um, those two last ones are really crucial because those deal with the integral part of building up a person and having some sort of influence on their lives. Um, the main thing that coaches state is they're not in the business of going undefeated. Um, yes, it is always fun to win. It's always nice to win. but a majority of them make sure that the players have the best opportunity to not only learn, but become better people and better athletes with the opportunities they are given. Now, with no further ado, the event that was dubbed March Madness by the media um, is morally the topic that I will be discussing, um, which actually follows with this video. Animation here from Coach Tom Izzo. Well, to his freshman, Aaron Henry. You would think on a 10-0 run, Tom Izzo would be happy. Izzo now having words with the freshman, Henry, who seems a little bit perplexed. And then this is still in that same huddle here. The little lunge there by Izzo. And you see the players getting between. Um, the two teams that were playing were Michigan State, that was the team with the altercation, and Bradley University. What we saw from the video was that co the coach, Tom Izzo, was yelling at his players during a timeout. Um, he even got to the point of where he was retained from other coaches on the staff as well as players. His team ended up, his team ended up winning the game, but the idea of March Madness was in full effect at this point, and the media had already started talking about it, um, even with the analysts even bringing it back up once the play had already finished. Um, and it dealt with a – led things to be about – Oh, how do you talk to your players? How do you communicate with your players? And a lot of the communication aspects went hand in hand with how the media was portraying it, how other players saw it. And that was the whole focus of the tournament, especially for Michigan State. The way I saw this was came solely out of the input process output theory. Um, the theory was created by Ludwig van Bottelhoff, sorry if I mispronounced that. Um, well, he broke down that as members of a group bring information to the group, the information is processed, which either brings a positive or a negative view of the information, and the best response is given. In this, you can very clearly see that, that the player does something wrong, the information is brought to the coach, the coach goes berserk and starts yelling, but not out of uh, demeaning the player, but as teaching him, like, hey, you can't have mistakes like that. Um, through the research of other scholars, I was able to find outlets to help my review of literature. Um, these two were the most helpful sources that I came across that I wanted to input into this video because of time restraints. Um, that if one, effective leadership can not exist 
without the cooperation of the group members. And becoming a great leader is impossible without the help of excellent, excellent colleagues. That it goes hand in hand with coaching because you need both working hand in hand and you can't have one without the other. Uh, everybody needs to be on the same page in order to be successful, especially from the coaching aspect. Which leads to the next point of athletes' relationships with the coaches influence their effective, their effectiveness, the cognitive, and their social experiences. All three are at clearly evident here that, okay, this might affect the player, but it can also help him because he, now he's able to know that, A, I need to bring forth most, my maximum effort, especially to be able to play at this level and play at this opportunity in this and in this atmosphere. Um, from the way that um, from the way that the input process output theory affects everything um, that this student has to go through is first through the recruiting process. Usually coaches sit down with the player, talk to them, get to know them, get to know their family. And usually the coach makes it very clear that, hey, while your student is in my care, I will be acting as a parent, making sure he's doing his best day in and day out. Um, then we get into the moment of the yelling incident in which the player didn't shut down. And even after the game, he didn't badmouth his coach when he was asked about why was he yelling. Um, and he was able to answer it. And he even returned um, to the university to play for his sophomore year, which is actually this year. Um, next, we move on to the way that the input process output theory affected the coach, which was simply he saw that his players were not putting forth 100% effort, um, which is the information that he was able to input, and intended to teach the man a lesson by raising his voice and yelling at him. He was never to demean the player, but to push him and point out some things that need to be done. Um, all coaches differ in the way that they coach, and the best version of them is coach using it to, ah. All coaches differ in the way that they coach, and for Tom Izzo, like many other coaches, he pushes the players to be the best version of themselves as possible. Um, in further research and kind of seeing, oh, is this a yelling thing, a constant? I actually found videos of him actually crying when his seniors were leaving the institution, um, which showed that, A, he actually does care about his players. Um, and the coaches play a huge role in this society because they are often the mentors who later will become a second parent and a close friend to not only the students that come in, but also the students that leave the institution. Um, Izzo is still one of the premier coaches in the NCAA um, and is still coaching at the institution after the incident. They were not gung-ho on firing him or disciplining him because they understood that he's going to push his players to be the very best, which is probably one of the school's mottos of pushing the individuals and pushing the students to be successful. Finally is the last slide, which is the input process output information that is given from the media. Um, the the game and yelling was seen as either a positive or negative, depending on how people saw it. Um, most of the media took it as a negative, while some people in the media saw it as a positive. Like, A, he was pushing him, he was pushing the player, while others who are on the negative side say, oh, he demeaned this player. Um, that was never the fact. Even Izzo, after the game, stated that he holds his players to a certain level and a certain standard. He had to make something clear to the young man. Um, but something that I did realize was the voices of the few people who said it was wrong to yell at the player in mistake, often overcounted the people that said, oh, he was in the right of doing so. Because um, often in the world you make mistakes and if you're not corrected on those mistakes, you're, you're bound to do it again and keep doing it because, you're, because people are culture, are people of habit. Um, the other players on the team saw it that as the culture of the team is somebody that's being pushed and from what is evident in the video is that they're built on hustling and putting forth 100% effort every time, not only on the court, but also in life. And I think that is very crucial, especially from the input output, the input process output theory, because now you're able to take in information and put your very best out, no matter if the outcome is positive or negative. Um, you try to put out your best foot forward and be on the best foot forward, especially in this instance. Um, this last slide is my reference slide in which I was able to see how other researchers use not only this theory, but how other people viewed coaching and what other coaching methods there were out there. Um, my thought process when I went, what I learned on this project is in order to be coached, you have to understand what it is to be pushed 
until you are able to be the best possible you that can, there can possibly be. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this presentation. I hope you will rewatch this video. Um, this is probably one of the funnest projects that I've done, especially from research of coaching and being able to analyze the video deeper. Um, I hope you enjoy. Thank you for watching the video.